What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Haze Demon Show. And today we are going to be doing a showcasing of a set of glitches, a series of glitches in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I actually had made this video about three years ago, so it was before I had any idea of like editing and uh, quality standards of any sort. Uh, so there's already some words that are in this video that are going to kind of explain what is happening, but uh, there's not enough information for you guys to understand it completely, so I'm going to be pausing and playing the video and explaining it as we go along. We're going to go ahead and show this off one time really quickly with le the least amount of explanation. All the explanation, again, is in these very short text, and then I'm going to explain the whole thing. So this is a series of glitches, basically, mostly, using the hover glitch uh, in the game to float, to hover your way into the forest temple as a child link. Now why would you want to do this? Well, because you can go in there as a child and then very easily go in there and defeat the uh, Phantom Ganon. However, uh, you have to have a, a, some way of skipping the cutscene afterwards, otherwise the game will crash. Uh, which is another set of glitches, uh, which is much more difficult actually. But anyway, let's not get too out of the way there with ourselves. So this, again, you must obtain the bomb chews from the bottom of the well as a child, and then head over here uh, before becoming an adult and everything you know it's a whole nother set of glitches to do that to get here but you are here right you got the bomb choose that's what matters the most and you're gonna obtain the infinite sword glitch now how you do this is you go up to something that you can interact with like a sign or picking something up so for in this instance I had walked over to where you can see in the right side of the corner of the screen that there is a statue the know-all statue or whatever the uh mask of truth statue and uh you can go up to it and hold down the right hold down your r and pick pull out your shield 
and then you kind of aim yourself away for from the stone so that you don't hit it with your sword when you go to use your weapon uh, with the B button, right? And so then you you hit the B button, and at the end of your motion of your attack, you're going to hit the A button to read the stone to interact with it, right? So if you do it correctly your weapon will automatically be triggered into infinite sword glitch and you'll start hitting the the um the statue multiple times while you're reading it and that's be the for sure how you know that you've got it but you can do this glitch many other ways anyway so you are going to obtain this glitch and then you're going to want to get into a position where you are looking directly backwards so that way you know that you're lined up when you go to look to your left here so whenever you look left or so actually we'll be rewind it here and as you can see on the sword you can see how it's got this extra uh, animation to it that is how you also can tell that you have an infinite sword glitch which is a way that makes it to where you can't walk off ledges however these ledges are slanted so you walk down them normally so anyway you're gonna get here you're gonna line yourself up onto the launch pad and then perform a sideways roll which is basically how you're going to walk backwards and then you're going to in uh, sometimes you may roll to the left and you got to just got to get yourself lined up to where when you're walking backwards you're going to roll to the right so you walk backwards you roll to the right and you're looking for getting in this specific position so this is the position that you want to be in to get the easiest way to get into the forest temple as a child you can be in different spots on this launch pad but this is the most optimal position that you want to aim for so you are using the pause buffering as you are side rolling until you can get to this point and then you are going to hold left and back and then hit the a button to do what is called a sideways backflip so he's rolling to the side and you're back flipping which is going to move you left okay so and as soon as you can see that your character is in that position right there where he has got his hands thrown up that means that your character is in the jumping position once you are in the jumping position you are going to want to pull out your bomb chew as soon as possible which you can use frame of uh, pause buffering to move the frames and then on and then you're going to use the shield once the bomb chew is out so you can see here the you the bomb chew hasn't lit been lit yet uh, we can actually pause it here a little bit more uh, it seems it's as pretty much as soon as you can see he's about to pull out the bomb chew you're gonna want to hold the shield button and you're still holding down the L button while you're in the middle of doing this and holding to the left since that's the way you were back flipping towards. So you're holding L and R and left when you're back flipping in this direction and then the bomb is gonna go off immediately. And, the, and it should allow you to be hovering in the air. If you are not, that means that you didn't time the, you didn't pull out the bomb chew fast enough and you didn't shield fast enough after you pulled out the bomb. So there's like a two, a, a, a two frames in between when you're jumping and when you're in the air and you have the bomb chew and then you're going to try to shield it to blow it up. So that's going to give you the optimal height. And so you're going to want to do this again two more times. But when you're in the air, you don't have to worry about... Uh, as long as you don't use your sword or jump in, in any direction, then you're fine. So you're going to want to just hold backwards and then it should make you roll to the right and then you're going to want to time it to where the bomb is the same exact uh, timing as the last one where you want to get the same frame on your way up uh, which is what we're here you can see me looking for we're waiting for that frame which is right here and then I'm at this point I'm trying to hit the A button and then you can tell that I'm jumping and then it, I'm in the air right and now this time however you are waiting until you're wanna, you want you want to pause buffer this as much as possible. I mean, you, if you can do it without it, then that's for the better, right? But as much as possible to get it one frame at a time until you can see that the bomb chew is underneath you because this time you're performing a different technique. 
Right, so now, as soon as you see the bomb, now I'm going to pause it here, and it says, during this frame, pause buffer in a Z target onto the bomb. So, you want to pause and Z target, pause and Z target, pause and Z target, unpause, pause, unpause, and Z target, right? Uh, you may not need to do it that many times, but for, for, for some reason, it seems to help me to try to, to Z target it multiple times before I actually let go of pausing and I'm just Z targeting. So, we're... You're doing the sideways backflip, you've got the bomb out right now, and then you're Z-targeting it. And the reason why you're doing this is because you can see uh, before, before, that, well, you can just see right now, honestly, that you are almost off the screen, right? So if you're off the screen, you can't really see what you're doing. Plus, we need to change the direction that we are looking. So your pause and I'm pausing in order to lock onto it and you can tell whenever you lock onto it for two different ways you'll see that green target uh, above the bomb chew giving you me signaling that you have a chance you can see it at the top of the screen here that you have the chance to be able to lock onto it so hopefully you know that's what you'll do right that's why I keep pausing and unpausing it on this specific frame because I'm trying to ensure that my my lock on is guaranteed and once it is locked on it should shift the camera to where it is facing upwards right so now whenever it's facing upwards what you're going to want to do is perform a sideways roll then tap to the right a few times followed by a screen locking to the right so what this means is that you can you can roll in any direction but whenever you go to roll which is specifically when you're walking backwards and then you roll it's going to do the sideways roll like you were doing to do the jumps however this is going to make it to where your character is facing to the right if it faces to the left you just got to try to hold the analog stick just barely in that direction when you're walking backwards and in the opposite direction or whatever he's for forcing himself to go no matter what so like this here is automatically going to the right, so we don't have to worry about that. So now, while he's in the middle of rolling towards the right side, you're going to tap to the right on the analog stick and then hit the Z lock button. Once you can see that Link is, about, is facing the right direction, you're going to Z lock. If he's not facing the right direction, don't press anything and you'll reset back to where you're standing facing the right and then you can try to perform another sideways roll again to do the right direction. So, now you are facing towards the right side. And then the lock-in, right? So now as soon as you lock in, you can go ahead and pull out your... You, you'll see that you're facing the right direction and your character is center on the screen. So you have done everything correctly. And you can kind of... I don't I think my camera's actually in the way of the map. You can't really see the map here, but you can kind of gauge how close you are to the door based on your yellow. Oh, you might be able to see it at the top of the map. Yep, okay. So, uh, now what you're going to do... So, the first three jumps that you did here are called sideways backflips with bomb chews to give you your sideways hover, basically. Now, you're going to want to do a hover with the slingshot, which you can do with a hook shot and a bow. And it's basically pulling the uh, slingshot and then lifting, tilting yourself to where you're facing all the way up. You should see it here. It'll say pull slingshot out and aim all the way up, then jump. So you, the main thing about this is that you're aiming to the slingshot directly up and then you're tapping the A button, and as soon as you're in the air, you want to let go of the slingshot, because the sooner the slingshot lets go, the higher your jump is going to be. So it's, if you shoot late, or if you don't even shoot at all, with the, uh, the bomb, when you go to pull out the bomb chew, you're not going to get as much height. So that's the key part in the slingshot jump to get the highest value, is to pull it, and jump and then let go of it first then hit the bomb chew button followed by the shield button which will automatically see now you can see that i've got the bomb chew out and then i'm just shielding it and then see now in this particular video here we did one 
slingshot first. Uh, now we're going to do another type of hover, which is called an angled backflip. So as it says, you're barely going to tilt forward on the analog stick and then to the left so that you are at an angle instead of walking forward. See, if you're hovering in the air, it, it'll allow you to walk forward without falling, right? So you're basically, the difference is where you're holding all the way to the left and you can tell your character's running. And then as soon as you, if you shift it slowly up towards the top, you can find the angle where they are, where it's looking the deepest to the left without actually fully turning you around. So you'll want to hold it up you know, and you're like 10 o'clock, it's around the 10 o'clock position if you're looking at it like a clock, right? And so then you pull out the bomb chew and then you have as much time as possible as until the bomb explodes for you to make sure that you get your perfect angle. So you don't have to hurry with you when you've got the angle and then bomb chew. You can make sure you get the angle before. And then as soon as you are ready, you're gonna hit the shield button and pause it. This is what I do to most effectively have my shield out and the bomb right below me at, with the minimal amount of time. So I shield and pause instantly, pretty much. So that way it gives, it gives me the most amount of time, right? Uh, shield and then backflip. And then what this is, it, it's not actually to the right. So if you were to hold directly to the right on the, on the analog stick after this point, you would do a sideways hop. So you wanna hold down mostly and then slightly to the right. So that way it's at an angle, a one, you know, a straight line from where you were holding it at the 10 o'clock. So you're trying to aim for the 4 o'clock or whatever. And that'll allow you to pull off the correct backflip because you're at a, you're angled to the left. All right, so that'll allow you to jump here. And then you go ahead and do it again. And then you just have to backflip from right here. And it'll take you directly up onto the top and you will be in the forest temple as a child. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be it. Thank you all so very much for checking out the Hayes Demon Show. We've given some good, sweet tricks and tips on some Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like and a subscribe button and leave a comment down below and i hope you guys have a wonderful day don't forget to bring a towel peace out you want to know how i got these scars shut up mimsy yeah.